Hey guys, welcome back to Undefeated Locals, and today we're bringing you the long-awaited making it meta of Shin Nemoto. Without a digital client, making these videos has been rather rough. So we've decided that after thorough testing, we're just going to bring them to you in a UVS Ultra manner, discuss the cards, how to play them, and give you, give you our opinion of the deck. Shin Nemoto is close so close to being meta. We've tested him with multiple attack lineups, foundation lineups, card counts, and currently we just do not believe he is strong enough to be called a meta character. However, this deck build is incredibly fun to play and can terrorize your opponents. The strength of Shin is that he likes to play mind games with your opponent. His form twice per turn, add one card from your hand to your card pool, and is indispensable. You can use this so many ways. Of course he has his staple diddly fire, which if played correctly gets a 3 speed bonus, burns your opponent for free, and regardless of your opponent's guessing games, draws you a card. Always good. It's a 6 diff making it a little rough to play early on, but you have to run this in the deck. Your opponent has to see this. This is the staple of playing your mind games. You'll notice that the rest of the attack lineup is all over the place for attacks. It is generally just evil good stuff, but you'll see the attack zones really vary. And this is because while Diddly Fire is there to be in the back of your opponent's brain, you want to be playing other cards to keep them on their toes. First off, we have Tongue Whip. Tongue Whip is just a generally good card. Uh, gets damage, clog your opponent's card pool, it's a 4 diff, it's got a good block. This is an all-around good card. You have to run this as well. Point Blank Shot. This, I believe, is the strongest card in Shin. Regardless of what your opponent guesses, blocking this becomes a problem because not many people keep plus three block modifiers in their hand, let alone plus three high block modifiers. So if they guess incorrectly on this, this just becomes an unblockable attack with powerful two on it. File Seizing is another one of those cards that in an evil deck, you just have to run it. It's a great deadlock deterrent and its first enhance is almost always a plus two damage draw one, and at worst is a stun two. Tetra Terror Onslaught. This is what the deck was missing. This card is also required for your deck. It allows you to fish out one of the other four diffs from your discard pile. Your opponent sees what you pulled out and lets you play further mind games and gives you a guaranteed attack in hand. So no matter what you're pulling out of your discard, it is pure value. Chronostasis Trigger is in here as a alternative mid threat. You don't always want to be playing your only mid on a 6 diff, so this gives you a threat to use when Deadly Fire is an option. And lastly, Trimmer Eruption is just a ball and ass card to play in any deck where you can choose when it plays from outside of your hand. Uh, this helps you get away with getting around resets and releases and and speed debuffs. Not to mention that EX2 can really send it over the edge. We're running one asset, Battle Arena. This card is mainly used for its static effect to juice up your momentum. We want to kill your opponent as fast as possible. Shinomoto has no defense. Speaking of no defense, Barrier Shield. <laughs> this is your only defense. We run two of this. You don't want to be running into a very long game with Shin, so if you have one in hand, you're good. You can hopefully end your opponent's attack run using the barrier shields. For foundation lineup, you'll see that we are very generic here. Lots of low cost. Human garbage lets you ready these. We became more is just extra damage. Confession lets you juke your opponent. With Shin's response, you get to look at random cards in your opponent's hand, giving you a bit of knowledge. Confession helps you just expand that knowledge. It's not a great card, but it's decent enough for a one diff, and it's deadlock enhanced, while not incredible, is usable in shit. Larceny, this is just more free damage. Trusted Assistant, this one is actually very strong for us. Uh, enhanced Flip, if this attack is played from anywhere other than your hand, commit one rival foundation is incredible. When used in tandem with Trimmer Eruption, you can knock down two of your opponent's defensive foundations real fast. Endless Loathing allows you to build after strung out five or six attacks. Because uh, that is Shen's goal, to destroy your opponent as fast as possible 
you string out as many attacks as you can, play what foundations you can just to kind of reset your board, and hopefully end them on their next turn. Excited for blood. We all know how this works. After you deal damage, you lose two health, and you draw a card. This is incredibly good for extending out. You need those extra cards in hand. Bench press. If you have lost health this turn, this attack is plus one damage. It's pretty easy to get in tandem with Excited for Blood and Tetra Terror Onslaught. It is fairly easy for you to lose health during your attack run. A Master's Pride. As long as something's going into your momentum at the end of the turn, you flip these Redium and try to survive that one more turn that you need to destroy your opponent. Looking for a challenge. Not only is it an incredible stun hate, it's enhanced commit flip. Your next check to play or block with an attack is plus two is incredible for being able to extend out on your attack run. Cooperation Offer is one of the few defensive foundations that we have. It's minus three speed, return this attack to its printed zone is pretty decent, and it's enhanced commit. If this attack was played from anywhere other than your hand, it gets plus two damage. Can be the difference between winning and losing a game. Force Quirk Activation. We use this to gain a momentum. If we are running at an attack line and we get to our point blank shot and we just need that extra bit of damage, this can get us two more damage into our momentum. Lastly, we have full on attack mode. Destroy one foundation. If your attack deals damage, gain one health, and your rifle loses one health. This is strictly to weed out committed foundations, so that way we don't put ourselves into deadlock, and it's plus one damage, gain one health can be a lifesaver. And lastly, we have the sideboard. You'll notice that this sideboard is all attacks. That's because with Shin, you have to be able to play mind games with your opponent. If you're playing your opponent and you notice they're disrespecting a block zone, like say they're disrespecting lows, you side in a few more lows just to try and push them over. Villainous Teamwork is an amazing attack for this. We can play it at the end of a long string with our form, ignoring progressive. This also lets us destroy assets that are a pain on our side things like airy, things like anything that Mimic might have. We also pack one more Chronosasis trigger into the sideboard in case we're running up against someone like Recovery Girl or Nomu who we have to commit out in order to finish them off. We are running the last point blank shot in the sideboard because like I said, this is probably one of Shen's strongest cards. Maybe you want to run four of it in the main board. I put one in the side just because Vile Seizing is also very good and having that deadlock pressure is essential. Speaking of deadlock pressure, one more Vile Seizing in the side in case you run into a good deck that wants to build to a million. This will help you get over those. The last Tremor Eruption in the sideboard as well, because if your opponent is building just a ton of nasty foundations, being able to take care of those is essential. And this is the only one that's different. We were looking for a good low attack to put in the side. Decaying Palm Slam is incredible if you can play this out while you have a momentum. This can turn an attack run that doesn't look great into an attack run that is unstoppable. It's powerful too, also juices it up quite a bit. Altogether, in order to play Shin Nomoto effectively, you have to have an intimate knowledge of your opponent's deck. You have to have a incredibly strong game sense knowing what block zones your opponent might be holding, what good cards they would be holding in their hand. You have to be able to juke your opponent hard, and you have to be able to win within your first or second attack run, because he just does not have a defense. We've tried to play him with a higher defense, it just does not end up working out, just because his face says attack. His face says you want to melt your opponent so fast. And unlike other characters like Tokuyami, he has no way of converting his attack into defense. He can't just summon Dark Shadow on a block. Uh, he's not Eraser Head. He can't just give your attacks minus two speed. He can't erase them. He doesn't have any of the typical defenses that a 720 or a 719 even would have, making him very rough to play. So for now, we'll be deeming him non-meta, but that's not to say he's not fun to play. Take this deck, put it together, take it to your locals. You will have a blast playing it. I can almost guarantee that. I know I did. I know my locals had a ton of fun playing against it. It's a very interesting deck, and we will be keeping an eye on it when Jetburn comes out to let you know if there are any changes that bring him up to par with the other meta decks in the field. Other than that, we hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys have seen anything with Shinomoto that might that we may have missed, remember to leave it in the comments. We're always down to change our opinions. We're down to check out different builds. This is just the one that we came up with. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.